Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk and today I'm going to talk to you about my ideas for building an experimental wind turbine. So the first uh, design I'm going to talk about, both of these are going to basically be omnidirectional, which means they have to spin vertically, and there's a good reason for that which I won't go into. Obviously conventional wind turbines generally have a rudder that points them into the wind, or they have um, some sort of electric servo that points them into the wind based on an external wind direction measurement. I want to build one that's omnidirectional, which basically means that it always has to spin vertically rather than horizontal, so it doesn't matter which direction the wind comes from, it always catches the wind. So the first and most basic design is called a Savonius design, and that is very simply put like wind cups. So there's something that is the top view, but there's something that looks um, like a cup or something that catches the wind on each side, sometimes there's four of them. Basically wind can blow in any direction, obviously blowing into there it's like catching an umbrella in the wind, and blowing here the wind kind of goes over so there's not so much drag, and so uh, the result is the entire thing rotates. So there's several um, issues with this, which is that obviously it can't go any faster than the speed of wind, which is why you use this sort of arrangement on a wind speed, uh, meter for measuring wind speed. And also due to the drag on uh, the opposing cup, it's not very efficient. So generally you only get about 15% efficiency from that design. So it is quite high torque though, because it's like if you've ever had an umbrella um, fly away in the wind, obviously it catches the full force of the wind in its cups. So you get quite a lot of torque, but you can't, um, as I say, go any faster than wind speed. So um, basically it doesn't go very fast and it's not very good for generating electricity. So there are other designs which will go faster than the speed of the wind and therefore they're much more efficient and better at generating electricity. So the next type of design is called a Darius design and that is basically aerofoils um, like an aeroplane wing spinning around um, vertically. So let me quickly just draw one. I've probably seen them something like um, an aeroplane wing and then on the other side is another one facing the other way. So it's got a pointy end there and a round end there. And this one has a round end there and a pointy end there. And it's basically two or more with the thing that spins in the middle. And it goes around in this direction. Sometimes they're uh, from the side view, they look like this and it spins around in the middle. So it has two very long um, aerofoils, which are shaped like that, or maybe more sometimes three or four. So um, basically the way this works is, looking from the top, we have an aerofoil, and as wind comes in this direction and goes around it, it gives lift in this direction. So this is fixed on a central central post, obviously there's another one off in this direction, and the result is that it goes around. Now the issue with this is that basically they don't self-start, so sometimes they have an electric motor to start them, but they do go faster than the speed of wind, so they're very good for generating electricity because they spin very fast, and therefore you get much better efficiency. However, I want to design a windmill that sometimes has high torque for driving in a mechanical application and will self-start, like the first design, the Savoynus design, but I also want it to go very fast for generating electricity. So my plan is to build a windmill, or a wind turbine, which converts from a Savoynus design at low speed, and for starting, into the Darius design at high speed. And now I'm going to explain how I want to do that. So, looking from the top of the uh, Darius wind foil, so we've got, let me draw this quite big, a pointy end and a round end, and obviously this is coupled to a, a central shaft, there's another one in that direction, somewhere there, that okay, goes in this direction. So, what I was thinking was, what about if this aerofoil split down the middle? So uh, basically it can open and close in this direction. So what we'd end up with when it's open is something like this. 
which is more like one of the uh, the wind cups on the Savoynus design, where obviously it's basically like an umbrella. Wind will blow into here, and um, and it will be caught by the winds, and it'll be incredibly high torque. So the mechanism for doing that's going to be something like a thing like this, where this point is fixed. These are hinges. This point is a hinge, but it also can slide up and down on a slider. So. <clears throat> The rotor is fixed on here to our central location and this piece slides up and down and then this can open and close in either direction. So that in low speed wind and for starting these are open and in uh, high speed wind we can close them and get our aerofoil back. So how's that going to work? Well I think that these will tend to open by themselves when it's spinning and that's obviously if wind blows in here, it's like opening an umbrella. Um, when it's closed, if wind blows from this direction, or because the thing's travelling in the air, air will go over here, which I think will make this open because it's high pressure, sorry, fast moving, low pressure air here, and inside higher pressure air because there's no air movement, so I think this will fly open. And obviously, as I say, when it's open, it's like an umbrella which stays open. So I think what we'll need to do is have a mechanism that we we can pull it closed. So it'll be happy being open, but we need to be able to pull this in this direction to pull it closed, which isn't too hard because we've got this big slider here with this piece sliding up and down. So all we need to do is attach a, a cable here around a pulley here, back down to the rotor and off to the middle, which will pull this towards this end and it will close this into an aerofoil. So obviously this thing is turning round, so pulling a string on each one of these, there's probably going to be three or four, is going to be quite tricky to do. It's rather similar to how a helicopter adjusts the pitch of its blades whilst the rotors are spinning. So we have our vertical drive shaft and all we really need to do is put a slip ring in the middle, which is basically another bearing which the outside is stationary and that can be pulled down by cables attached to basically whatever's holding this on the ground and the middle piece can turn around still with the shaft that's turning and that one has cables that run up to the turning part so basically it means that the turning piece still turns and the stationary piece is still stationary the cables don't get twisted round and round but the whole thing moves up and down so that we can pull the strings and we can open and close our cups or aerofoils or whatever they are at the time. In terms of materials, um, I have a bearing here, it's quite a big bearing that came out of an electric motor, which will probably be sufficient. I'm planning on building this thing uh, approximately as tall as I am, so each aerofoil will be roughly 1m80 tall and uh, the width of that's about 60 centimetres or two feet. So I think this bearing will do, probably one at the top and one at the bottom. Also have this, which is a Lazy Susan bearing. Now that's got lots of full bearings um, inside, you can just see them there. It is quite noisy though, when it gets going, but they're incredibly cheap and they come in different sizes, so that's also a consideration. The other option is just making um, a ring out of some material and having a series of wheels or bearings on the inside um, that that runs on, where the outside turns and the inside is fixed, and making a big bearing out of trolley wheels or, or other bearings. In terms of material for the construction of the actual uh, cups stroke aerofoils, I'd really quite like to build something which is transportable, light, the whole thing's an experiment, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but the basic plan is to build this thing with sort of wooden sticks and then have um, the thing shaped with wire, wire veins attached between them and then skin the whole thing up with fabric. So I'm going to use a airtight fabric, which is the sort of thing that you use in kites. Here's a small piece of airtight fabric, which I actually used to build a kite out of quite cheap. Um, comes in various colours, good stuff. So that'll make it incredibly lightweight 
and um, it'll be very easy to make the hinges and things because it's just going to be a wooden frame rather than having actual rigid parts. And it also means that when the um, when the things open, that actually these are completely hollow, so they act more like wind cups rather than being flat surfaces, which is what you'd have if these things were rigid. So that's the plan. Next time I'll be starting on the construction and uh, subscribe and check back to see the whole series.